Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to look at Dead Cells. What is Dead Cells? It is a roguelike game where you hack and slash your way through an ever-changing dungeon, you collect new weapons, new abilities, um, it's really, really popular, it's received critical acclaim, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good and it's worth your time and money. If you, if you want to find out whether it is, stick with me, we're going to go through Dead Cells from every aspect now, and then you'll know. Okay, so like I mentioned in the intro, Dead Cells is a roguelike game wherein the player takes control of a cell-like entity, I guess, in a body of armor to dodge, dive, dip, duck, and dodge their way through a myriad of maze-like dungeons, also while slashing their way through various enemies that will attempt to eat you, stab you, and cast spells on you. It'll sort of remind you of early Metroid games, but with a modern medieval rogue-inspired twist, sort of. During your adventure through these dungeons, the player will uh, be collecting a few resources. There's gold, cells, blueprints. Gold is used during the levels to buy weapons, spells, and stat increases. Cells are used at the end of each dungeon to permanently upgrade yourself or unlock new weapons and spells. And the blueprints, those are what enable the player to unlock new weapons and powers once they reach the end of the level also. This is all presented in a pixelated art style and it has a soundtrack to match. It's independently developed and published, brought to the world by the studio Motion Twin. So today we're going to check it out, give you our thoughts. This is MGN's impressions of Dead Cells. Our impressions have evolved and today we're going to dissect Dead Cells from a variety of angles. We'll give each angle a score from 10 and then give you our final verdict. We're going to score Dead Cells on 1. Difficulty. Is the game challenging enough to maintain your interest without being so difficult that it's inaccessible to players unfamiliar with the genre? 2. Appearance Dead Cells is presented with pixels. That's really in right now. Is it cashing in on a fad, or is the pixelation done well and it adds something to the game? 3. Sound Is there voice acting? How is it? Do the sound effects of the parkour, the hack and slashing hit the ear well? How's the soundtrack? Is it worth listening to, or is it simply just... there? 4. Story. Some games similar for Goa's story and let the gameplay carry the game itself. Does Dead Cells fall into this crutch? And is the gameplay good enough to carry it if it does? Fun. That's number 5. Has it gone fun to play? That's the whole point. Making some gameplay that is genuinely enjoyable and making you want to play the game more. 6. Price. Is the game priced at a point where you get value in proportion to how much money you spend? Is the longevity in your currency? Okay, so we're going to start with number one, difficulty. We're going to give it a zero if it's too hard, easy, or ten if it's just right. That's the scale. Dead Cells does take a little adjusting to. You'll need to time your defense abilities well in order to maintain your health throughout dungeons. Once you've gotten through the initial level and think you have a grasp on timing your abilities, jumping, rolling, shields, etc., then you'll have to contend with the platforming aspects of the game. The game jumps quickly from having a variety of enemies to learn to the platforming aspects of the game, then quickly jumps back to introducing new enemies again. This can be a little jarring for players unfamiliar with the genre, but there isn't really a penalty for death, and each run contributes to your overall progress. Yeah, trial by fire isn't necessarily a bad thing in Dead Cells, it works well. If you're getting punished for a lapse during a run, well, it's something you'll learn from and take through to your next run, so there's no really harm there. You don't lose a great deal, you lose some cells between levels, but overall, the game doesn't feel overly punishing in the learning stages of the game. I'll be honest, these kind of games aren't my forte, but I feel like Dead Cells hit the mark in being a good educator to its gameplay without making me frustrating when I didn't hit the mark. So I'm going to give difficulty an 8 out of 10. Moving on to appearance, 0 would mean that the game is hideous and painful to look at, and 10 is just gorgeous. I'm not sure the decision to make Dead Cells a pixelated game was made to cash on the success of pixel games lately, or well, that's how the studio always genuinely intended to make their game, and to be honest, their dedication and execution has made that point irrelevant. Dead Cells is amazing to look at, it's gorgeous. Each action your character takes, each action the enemy and environment takes is precise and crafted in such a way that there is no visual clutter, it's easy on the eyes and doesn't get lost in the fast paced nature of the game. Achieving this when there's so much happening on the screen at any one time? Achieving this with the levels of variety and weapons and spells, enemies and environments? Well, it would have been a massive exercise, one that is vitally key in the success of the game, but that doesn't necessarily mean the studio could pull it off. But they have. They knocked it out of the park. Not only is the game easy to follow visually, but the sprites, the backgrounds, it's all really beautifully done. Appearance? 
10 out of 10, no fault. Next is sound. A zero would mean that you instantly mute the game when you start it up. And 10 means that you just, that the sound is so good, you want more of it, you add the soundtrack to your playlist, etc. Sound is another tick for Dead Cells. There are so many actions that can influence the player and induce a sound effect. With this, you'd imagine that sometimes they can all feel the same and get lost in one another. You'd be wrong. And honestly, so was I. I was genuinely surprised that an independent developer could achieve what, achieve what the team behind Dead Cells has with their sound design and the execution of that design. Plus, the little voices the characters put on when interacting with one another are pretty cute, pretty cool. I like them. So what does that leave? That leads the soundtrack. Simply, it's phenomenal. And I've come to this conclusion for a few reasons. The first is that it matches the game perfectly. It makes the epic dungeon monster slashing adventure that is Dead Cells, it nails it. It's deep and brooding where it needs to be, and it's blood pumping and epic where appropriate. The second point about the Dead Cells OST is that it transcends the game itself. The soundtrack makes an amazing listen in the background of everyday life, just as it does in-game. You can absolutely use it in the background while studying, playing other games, for an epic audio experience. So sound, 11 out of 10. I know you're thinking, how can you give something an 11 out of 10? And I can because it's my review. That's it. Moving on, story. Zero would be that the story is non-existent or it's just stupid and painful. And 10 being means it's extremely drawing, you want more of it, fantastic. Road games like this often fall in the crutch of not relying or making much of an effort to tell a compelling story. Hades changed all this and raised the bar in terms of what players can expect in terms of storytelling experience in this genre. Whilst Dead Cells predates that revolution, it's, it's much earlier than that, it's hard not to hold it up to the same standard when you play the game in 2021. Yeah, there is some lore and some context to your activity if you really are looking for it or if you fill in some of the gaps yourself. But there really isn't that much to go off, especially when first starting the game. You're not really given any context of why you should be doing the things you're doing. Those things are enjoyable, they're great, it's a lot of fun, but they're largely without context or meaning. I don't mean there needs to be some huge exposition dump at the beginning of the game, with over-the-top cutscenes and like a Silmarillion's worth of lore and explanation to your character and their environment, but I would at least like some. There needs to be a little text scroll or some other form of exposition that extends beyond your character and the first NPC encounter before your runs. So I'm going to give story a 4 out of 10. Next is fun. Zero being actively painful to play and 10 being flawlessly fun gameplay. Dead Cells achieves what every game in the history of gaming has tried to achieve. It is fun. It's an absolute blast to play. If you strip away all the other amazing elements of the game, like the satisfying progressive system, the amazing soundtrack, strip away everything that, everything else except the platforming and the combat, and you'd still be left with an incredibly fun game. But as Dead Cells has all those other elements done expertly well, and the platforming combat, like, it's just a ridiculously good game to play. You can sit down for 20 minutes and have a blast. You can sit down for two hours and have a blast. The combat feels extremely responsive, the weapon and spells are really cool, genuinely fun to use, and all feel different. You can play however you like. You can be a sword and board gamer, you want to be ranged, you want to rely on spells and powers, you can do whatever you want. However, you want to have fun, you're given that option. It almost feels super enjoyable. But on top of that, like I said, you're also making progress to your overall progression in game. Each, young, each run is unique and fun, makes you more powerful for the next, it creates an extremely addictive paradigm where you can't wait to see what you'll unlock and put together for the next run. And for that, I have nothing but praise for the developers. I'm gonna give fun a 10 out of 10. The next is price and price is our last point. Zero being that the game is simply overpriced and 10 being you are getting it for an absolute bargain. The progression in Dead Cells is made in such a way that for a very long time, you'll feel like you're getting something new out of each run. There are a lot of weapons to unlock and upgrade, and the same can be said with the abilities. So naturally that means that there's a lot to do. There's a lot of staying power. And this isn't an indie game that you can experience in just one afternoon. It's a very good thing, because as I mentioned earlier, you're going to be having fun the whole time. So the playing time you get out of the game is pretty good. How does that stack up against price? Well, the game is currently $35.95 AUD on the Steam Store, and there are various packs that include DLCs, soundtracks, and, and stuff like that. I'd suggest if you're interested in Dead Cells at all, invest in the pack with the soundtrack because the sound team deserve all the love and support they can get for what they've achieved. So where does that price stand up about how much enjoyment and time you're getting out of the game? Pretty good, good, not great, say somewhere in the middle. It's a little on the expensive side for similar games in the genre, but it's of the highest quality so it's not something you're really going to regret purchasing. 
price, I'm going to go 6 out of 10. What does that mean? That means our final verdict for Dead Cells is an 8 out of 10 overall. And that's going to wrap things up for our MGN impressions of Dead Cells. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Um, and if you agree or disagree with any of the points we've made, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.gg blog and the YouTube channel. Be sure to keep your eye out on both for news, reviews, updates, all the things you love on all the games you love. Thanks for listening.